For me, I really like to see people interact with the, the work and that's giving me something. But if I'm happy, I hope other people are happy as well. For spring 2014, in a co-commission with Brighton Festival, Fabrica presents On Balance, an exhibition by the Swedish artist Jakob Dahlgren. In his installations and photo projects, Jakob celebrates the colourful, geometric, abstract elements that are all around us. Through the use of mass-produced but highly designed objects, he shows how the aesthetic of modern abstract art has become an integral part of everyday life. Two of Jakob's playful, interactive installations have been reconfigured to work in Fabrica's unique space. The wonderful world of abstraction is made up of thousands of hanging, coloured ribbons that visitors are encouraged to walk through. And Heaven is a Place on Earth uses colourful glass bathroom scales to create a new kind of floor to walk across. This scale piece is called uh, Heaven is a Place on Earth and uh, it's an interactive uh, artwork that consists of uh, 749 bathroom scales. I really like to use a lot of uh, the same thing. So if you use just one scale, it still becomes a scale, but if you use uh, 749 scales, the, uh, the scale disappears in the mass and becomes something else, and I'm interested in that. In my work, I'm very interested in the physical experience and uh, the sort of the connection with the viewer and the work. And when you have a lot of scales, your weight kind of disappears because one foot is on one scale and the other on the other. So, but if you add the sum, you get the correct number. It seems like uh, most people are very happy to walk on them. They pretend to be shy in the beginning, but then they start to walk on it. When you get people to interact with work, they become much more interested in the work. When they physically, physically can experience something, then it's not just your brain that experiences, it's the whole body. And they become part of the work for people outside of the work. Some people are reluctant, but I think it's more, uh, more of a joyful experience, actually. Usually I show my work in white cube spaces, so, so I was really in, intrigued by uh, showing the work in this sort of church or chapel space. Mm -hmm. I know, I mean, the title of this work is called Heaven is a Place on Earth, so it's kind of connect with the building. This piece is called uh, The Wonderful World of Abstraction and uh, it's actually from, I had a residency in uh, Sri Lanka and I found this uh, silk ribbon store and it was, was such a great store and they had silk ribbons in like hundreds of colors and uh, I just felt like I have to do something with these silk ribbons. And then I was thinking about this uh, comic strip with uh, Bridge Riley when she's disappearing into one of her optical paintings. And I was imagining doing this interactive piece where people can get inside this uh, painting and get lost. When you got inside it, you totally lost the uh, feeling of uh, directions, so you got lost inside the painting. It was a really nice experience because you, you got this really nice silk ribbon uh, sort of touching your body and, and uh, you could bump into other people inside. Part of the piece also became the production because the production is quite uh, 
a big production to make all those silk ribbons tied to the construction. So to make 36,000 silk ribbons, I, I need a lot of people. I once showed this piece in, uh, in the Kunsthalle in Budapest. And uh, on the opening, it uh, pre-opening, it was like the minister, one of the ministers in the in um, Budapest came for this pre-opening and uh, with his bodyguards, and he, he just went into the piece and uh, and uh, then he disappeared. And the bodyguard got really stressed out, so they <laughs> were rushing into the piece and trying to find him, and they thought it was like a hidden hidden, hidden trap. Jakob's melding of art and life extends to his own daily existence. Every day since 2001, he's worn a striped shirt and taken a photograph of himself to document the fact. When I went to art school, I was really interested in abstract painting. And uh, I was doing abstract colour field paintings. And uh, one of my friends said to me, you look like you're, you look like your paintings because I was usually wearing a striped hang tan t-shirt and I was thinking maybe I should try to make a painting out of my t-shirts. So I, I made the exact copy of the pattern of the t-shirt as a painting and after a while I felt like uh, I was not really interested in making the paintings, I was more interested in the t-shirts. So I decided to start to wear the t-shirts and see them as paintings. In my collection, uh, in my archive of t-shirts, I have more than, I think it's 1047 today. So after a while I felt that it was difficult to choose which t-shirt I'm wearing. So I decided to, to invite people to create shows. And to create shows I mean that they decide for a specific time what I'm wearing, which t-shirt. And uh, to make this work more public, I recently started to make it uh, on Instagram. So you can follow the exhibition on Instagram. And every day it's a post with a new image from each day. And all those images becomes like a diary of my life. It's really nice to see all the images because I've been taking images for such a long time. And in uh, like 13 years time, you become older. It's, it's interesting to see the transformation of myself. At the end of the On Balance exhibition, Fabrica will gift bathroom scales to audience members and community groups. The idea of gifting and debt are themes explored by artist Alina Azadeh. At Fabrica, as one of the resident artists, I will be um, taking up this subject that I have to work, work with a lot before of gift and exchange and kind of uh, opening it up further for sort of me and the public, and that will be through a series of, of interventions. So burning the books is a major one, and I'm doing another project called Random Acts of Generosity. It's really looking at, you know, what, what a gift really is. So, you know, when you give a gift, and a gift is defined as something that you don't expect to get anything back from, are you really giving a gift? And, you know, if a gift is conditional, isn't it just a debt? And so it's looking at gift and, and, and debt, the Random Acts of Generosity is um, uh, basically a one-day event and I'll be in the gallery and anyone can book in for 15 minutes to come and meet me and spend 15 minutes with me and at the end of that time I'll give them something and I can't say any more than that but I'll give them something and I'm, I'm using a day of my pay to kind of give away gifts both visible and invisible. So burning the books is a project that explores what debt can mean um, on not only financial, but social, moral, um, uh, ecological, political levels to the individual and to society and how it impacts the individual and society in general and, and particularly at the time that we're living in, what that means. So I open a new book of debts in each place 
and then over a period of time, that might be on, in the course of one evening or it might be two months, uh, stories are collected, people can read stories. It will go out with me on the streets and that might be incognito, just approaching people or going into places. Or it might be in quite a theatrical way, so with my firekeeper wandering around the Cathedral Square, for example, in Birmingham when we were there and engaging groups of people. Then, um, if I'm invited, I'll go into particular places, so it might be giving a, a writing and discussion workshop with a group of people, or it might by, be by the invitation to say I went to um, a freedom club with elderly people and I sat and just read them. I was just a storyteller of the book, and at the end some of them wanted to kind of add in stories, so that's a very low-key way. The first book of debts that I went out with was in Liverpool, um, and it was Burnt at the Blue Coat. And then I uh, did a book of debts in Portslade through with Blank Gallery, and then I got touring um, money, and now that has begun a whole new cycle, the first of which was at the Ducky Night at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern, which was amazing. Then there's the whole online book of debts. So everything is an online um, book of debts where if you add a, a debt to the book, it then comes to me by email and I scribe it in to that particular volume. If I'm on the street, you know, <laughs> incognito, it can be people are wondering what the hell I'm doing with this book. So it can be quite uh, cagey. And then, of course, when they write, it's, it's a kind of an imaginary space. Um, they get quite disarmed and they're kind of interested. Once you sit them down and they start to read what's in the book, then they get it. When they read other people's narratives, they start to kind of understand why it's relevant to them. Um, if it's in a context where I'm giving a kind of um, a, a talk, and a, or a workshop, which I do, I've done writing workshops, where I ask people what they think about when they think about debt, and I offer them potential uh, meanings around debt, which is what I do, then they come up with all kinds of things. Um, so for example, I've sat with you know, a bunch of students, none of them put, and done this, and none of them put student debt in, they all put in you know, debts that were far beyond money, and that's what they wanted to talk about. So it's really varied, the response. Some people, it's like, I don't know anyone anything. You know, the first person I approached in Port Slade, which was the second book, said, I don't owe any anyone anything. No one owes me anything. And that is one of the advantages of being completely alone in this world and put that in your book. You know, and that said a lot also around debt as a kind of form of relationship. And that was interesting too. You know, that's as interesting as someone putting in something you know, willingly that they want to kind of work through. So, you know, it touches on the confessional, it touches on the therapeutic, it touches on protest, it, it is a framework for many, many different kinds of narrative and, and comment. So it's this idea of, you know, um, looking at the way that humans interrelate and keep in balance their exchanges with each other, which is what I've always been interested in, and, and the way that giving has seems to have become connected to losing something um, and um, or profiting and you know what does that mean in socio-economic terms and in human terms and then at the end of uh, the the residency or the cycle that that book has in that place whether that's two hours or two months there's a kind of final event where um, people gather the book is recited so all the debts whether in part or in whole depending on how much is in the book are recited aloud and then there's a kind of ceremonial aspect, you know, it's, a, it's an imaginary um, space. And then the book is burned and then there's a wake afterwards and we celebrate.